Welcome to the channel. My name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about starters, starter dries, how they work, the different types, and some of the things that you run into for issues and how to solve those problems. So stay tuned. So welcome back. If you didn't already know it, my name is Eric and we do the weekday Monday to Friday and educational as well as self-development, personal growth, and they're all available on podcasts as well for your listening pleasure. Today, I want to walk you through some of the basics when it comes to learning what you're doing when you're trying to start something. And if you understand the process, then if you have problems, it becomes easier to try to figure out where the issue is, okay? And the first thing that we need to learn is the starter. Now, not all starters are made the same. Even this one here is a brand new one that goes on to Kawasaki. And this one here is on a Briggs. But the principles are the same. When we energize either one of these starters, all we're doing is we're causing this to spin upwards so that these teeth and the starter drive come in contact with the grooves that are in our flywheel. It's called the ring gear. The other thing we need to know is that these ring gears come in both steel and aluminum. So if you're if your starter drive is steel, your, your ring gear is going to be steel as well. They don't recommend you run, we buy these by the shop pack. I think they're like 50 in a pack. But these here are more for the aluminum. And the aluminum and the plastic work well together. And your plastic will go before your ring gear normally. But you can't run the plastic on the steel. It will tear them right up. All right, so that's how these two work. When they energize, they get spun up like that. And then when the engine starts, it kicks it back down. Now, this one's off of Kawasaki Liquid Cold. And kind of the same idea, except... We're now going and having a solenoid mounted on top of the unit instead of on the body somewhere. And the difference between the two is when you energize this, there's a magnet in here and it pulls the plate backwards. And when it does, a little hook, like a fork, will lift this up. And while it's lifting this up, it's spinning at the same time because there's also, it's feeding across, you can't see it, it's in here, but it's feeding across and energizing this to start spinning. With these here, you've got the battery side and the starter side, and then you got the key switch, and then if you're unit doesn't ground to the body then you're going to have a fourth grounding called the four post it's the only difference between the three and the four the three grounds to the body the four has a grounding wire because you've got this mounted on plastic somewhere on that lawnmower so the biggest issues that we see and you're probably staring at this thing saying what's the big elephant in the room the big elephant in the room came in, the guy wants me to order him a brand new one. And I asked him, why do you want a new one? He said, because this one is seized up. And what ended up happening with this one is when somebody engaged the starter and it didn't, didn't start, it locked into gear. The starter locked it, and that will act almost like 
you have a seized engine because it you can't get it turned and it hasn't got enough oomph to come in because it's already there. And this could happen on lawnmowers, garden tractors, farm tractors, even some of your pickup trucks and cars. If you didn't know any better, you'd say the engine was gone. You can't turn it. But in this case, after the odor had left, I just simply put a pipe wrench on that and I turned it back the other direction and allowed the starter drive to kick out. Once I did that, then I could turn it over freely. So that's another thing, guys. You know, I've seen this over and over and over again is your starter drive locks into gear and it won't allow that flywheel to turn and you end up thinking you've got a seized engine because you can't even turn it, right? Because your starter drive is up in there. So, with this one, we're going to go ahead. I've already had it running. Ten minutes after the owner left, I had this thing running with a jump pack. So that's going to get fixed, and the guy's going to be thrilled right to death. But the main thing you need to know about starters is basically what they do. An electric start, it just spins up, catches here, turns it over, and the minute this fires, it kicks back and allows it to drop back down. You can replace this whole unit. You can replace the steel gears without having to go buy a new starter if you tear out the ring gear on it you can buy a new ring gear and pop this one off and just pop the other one on but just keep in mind that if if you're running steel here you want to run steel here now you can swap this over and put aluminum but if you put aluminum don't run a steel gear because it will just tear the aluminum right up. It's unforgiving. So on that note, hopefully you've learned something. <laughs> but I try not to overcomplicate things too much. It is what it is what it is, right? Keeping it real. A lot of guys will say you need a new starter. Because they don't like to tear these apart and just put a new ring gear on it. Or new gear on it. A lot of guys will go out and buy a brand new flywheel because the ring gear is bad on it. When you can buy, you can buy ring gears, you can get them aftermarket. We used to sell the kits from Stens that cover quarter of wide spectrum of engines. And you just pop this off, pop that out, put the other one, press it in with a hammer, tap it right around. Easy peasy. And you learned yesterday how to take this off the easier way, I call it. So, this is replaceable, this is replaceable, this whole top unit is replaceable in one piece. Just be careful when you're taking these apart that you don't lose any of the parts. And remember how it went. So on that note, guys, you guys have a great day. And again, thanks so much for watching my videos. You know, if you guys weren't watching them, it wouldn't make any sense for me to make them, right? But... I'm trying to keep it as real as possible and if, and even include the screw-ups. You know, when, when something goes foul, I'll show you. You know, we were talking yesterday, Claude and I, that we've had it in the past of where we went to put the puller on it and had one of them snap off inside there. And then you spend an hour and a half, two hours trying to tap that drill it and then tap it and bring it back out, right? Those things happen. And a lot of times they happen if you get into too big of a hurry.